Okay. All right. So um, it, I'm going to open the, um, in fact, I might also do that over here so that I don't have to flip back and forth as much. Just if I want to. And we did look at this a little bit, I think, before class was over last time. But um, just to make, did anybody do it? The, that assignment, the head first one? Anybody do it yet? Okay. So we're going to do that together. But I am going to try and. Where I put that stuff on the drive. Let me get to it. I guess I didn't put it over here. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Now I can have it in both places. Okay, so we're going to go to this head first book, and we're going to go to that chapter one that I was talking about, the guessing game. And like I was telling you in here, he does use his idol in this head first book. So let me get it open over here for right now. And if you've not found it, let me know because you'll need to you'll need it to do the homework assignment, the second one that we might not get to today. So starting to code, this is the part that we're going to do today, the very first one. And what he tells you here, programming lets you do more. You want to do more with your computer. So, you know, we've been like I told you, this class is really about pseudocoding and flow charting. And I know I had a student, uh, yeah, Ruth is on, on here today, and that's the important part. If you're not understanding the Python, some of the syntax, but you get the logic through, then you're gonna be okay. But by the, you know, after spring break, and so Python should become a little easier to you also. So this, um, this program is going to, we're gonna learn to code a guessing game. So this code is a guessing game program. Study it carefully and opposite each line of code in the program, write down what you think the code does. If you're not sure what a particular line of code does, don't worry, but try to guess anyway. One line has already been entered to get you started. So this part over here is actually what some people would call pseudocoding, but we pseudocode more specific to what we're going to code in Python. Like their pseudocoding here is a little wordy because you'll notice here they do this section. Now, this part here that says guess equals int sub g is going to change because why do they have to do that? Why do they have to convert this to an integer? What happens when you do an input here? How does it come in? String. So G is a string here, and you can't do any comparisons with a number if it's a string. Now, if you were comparing it to the word guess, then you could. But what is the way, the way that we've been doing it without having to do two statements is we just said, uh, we'll call the final one guess. We would just do it like this. We would say integer input, and then we would say, guess the number. Isn't that what it says in there, I think? Guess the number. So if we were doing it the way I've been showing you, then we only have to do this one statement so that convert the input to a number, you could alleviate. You could delete that statement. 
but either way works. Some people, it makes more sense to do it in another step. So they have a temporary variable here, like holding the string, and then they go ahead and convert the string to the variable that they want to use in their comparison. Okay, so in this particular problem, it's saying, okay, we want to, first of all, print welcome out to the screen. I'm going to try to make this a little bigger here. Let me see. Uh-oh, I hit. I hit something. I don't know what it was. All right, so view, let me see, where's my, I'm just not going to do it there. I thought I could do it bigger. Maybe it's here. My Zoom's not working for some reason. There we go. All right, so when, uh, when we're reading this problem, what we want to be able to do is the user to put in a number. Now, because we can see that the number is, we want, to, we want them to enter five, then this program, you know whether it's going to run because you know what you're going to enter. If you enter five, now why is there a double equals there? We talked about that yet? Yes. The, the single equal sign is called an assignment statement. It's not a, a, an assignment operator. It is not a comparison operator. So to compare the variable guess to the number five, I have to use a double equals. So if guess is the same as, that's what that double equals means, five, then you have to have a colon at the end in Python. Python makes you put a colon at the end of your if statement. Print, you win. Else, print, you lose. So is this if statement a single alternative or a dual alternative if? A, a dual because you have an if, you have a yes side and a no side. So since you have both, then that means it's dual alternative. It's going to print this regardless of whether it's true or false. It's still going to print game over, right? So if we look, this code is written in release three of the Python programming language, which is used throughout this book. So if we look, here is what um, your answers, this first one that says print welcome is going to display a welcome message. This one's going to ask the user to input a guess. This is going to convert the input to a number. Was the guess number equal to five? Then it's going to tell the user you win. Otherwise, it's going to tell the user you lose and then in the program. So that's what that Python does. And some people, I think it may have been in the online, actually did their pseudocode like this, which is fine. This tells you exactly what the Python does. But normally when we do pseudocode and flowchart, we want it to look a little bit more like our Python or whatever language we're coding in, right? So, you might be wondering what G and guess are in this in the code. They are called variables and they're used to keep track of data in the computer's memory. Okay, so let's see. The value entered will be known as G. G equals input guess the number. Guess equals integer G. So this creates a number version of the G value and calls it guess. A variable is really just a label for data. So remember, that's what I, uh, I haven't gotten across real well, is that variable names just hold a place in memory for a value. So it's just a label and that's what a variable name is. It's, so if the user inputs three at the keyboard, then guess will be set to the number three. And whenever the computer reads guess, it will read it as the value. So some people understand Python better through this book. And that's why I like to give it to you as a source, because sometimes it will be in pictures a little bit easier to handle. So here it's saying, 
it's using a jar re to represent it. And it says, be careful with equal signs in code. Programming languages use equal signs for different purposes. In most languages, including Python, a double equals is a test for equality. It means, are these two things equal? In contrast, a single equal is an instruction known as assignment. That means set the value to. So how do you run your code? There are two things that you will need to run the guessing game program, an editor and an interpreter. So the editor saves the code you write into a file on your hard disk. The code, sometimes called the source code, is just text and it can be written and read by humans. So even though Python is a scripting language, it's still just source code. The computer still cannot read it until um, it has been translated to machine language. So here's what happens. You code the program, you create a .py file, Python, the interpreter, changes it to zeros and ones, and then the computer can understand it. And that's what's actually happening behind the scenes when you use Python. So we need an editor and a Python interpreter. Okay, so what I was telling you is in this book, they use IDLE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment, okay? So what they're gonna show you is just the IDLE editor. What's the editor that we've been using? What's the editor that you've been using to code Python? PyCharm, okay. So you can continue to, to use PyCharm and do these same programs, or you can use IDLE, whichever you prefer to do. Uh, since you're used to PyCharm, you'll probably stick with it. That's what most students do. So this is the program, and I actually, um, I think I give those to you, but we're gonna code this just, so you can go ahead and open up uh, PyCharm or Idle, whichever you want, and we're gonna code this program. Uh, let me get down here to where I'm at over here so that I can close it out. What page? Uh, let's see, and when I give you the assignment, what's kind of confusing in the submit assignment, if you're in the PDF, the page number is different than if you have an actual hard copy of the book. I meant to bring that up here so you could see what it looked like. Some people really like these books and you can pick them up for under $10 usually on Amazon used because they don't, this is an older book. So let me go here to where we're at. Okay, so what we're going to do is open up um, PyCharm and we're gonna code this program. Get it open here. So I'm gonna create a new project and I'm gonna call this, I think I told you in the submit what to call it, but I can't remember what it was. So I'll just say HF for head first uh, underscore part one, because that's what this is. So create it in PyCharm. And you remember you right click and do new Python file. And I'm gonna name it again the same thing, uh, underscore part one and click okay. And it should open it up in the editor here. Sure, go ahead and put your initials on the end. That would be helpful. Okay, so now we're going to type in just like it is there because we're going to make some changes to it. Print welcome Welcome. And 
And then we're going to say, what was the next line is G. Uh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it the shortened way that we've been doing, so, like I wrote up on the board. Let's just do guess equals, because that's the smarter way to code, in my opinion. Input. And then we'll say guess a number. And if you don't put a space there, then it's going to ask for that number right bumped up against it. So, okay. Next line of code is if guess is the same as, and you don't, oops, you don't have to put a space there. You can put the equals signs right up against it. It's whichever way is easier for you. Is equal to five colon and it automatically indents for you. Then we want to print you when else. Now, the else has to go over even with the if or it'll give you trouble. Else. Showing a colon there. I thought you didn't have to put one, but I think we do. Let me see where I'm gonna read it. Yeah, else also has to have a colon after it. Then print uh, you lose. And last thing that is in line with the else. So if you put it in line with this, you indent here, then it will only print out that line if it's, if it's false. So that's why it's important that you go over to the next line. Or, or, I'm sorry, indent all the way over. Do not indent is what I'm trying to say. Okay, now it will say print game over. No, I did all caps, you don't have to. <laughs> the print won't work in all caps, so I gotta go back. What's inside the quotes, it doesn't matter, but print is a reserved word, so it cannot be in all, all caps. Okay, so now I'm ready to run it. Let's see if it works. Run, run, and it should be coming up and asking me for, and it did, I just, mine's kind of, there we go. It says, welcome, guess a number. So if I want it to print out, you lose, then I'd probably put something like a six in there, right? I don't know why that blinked. Game over, you, lo you lose, game over. Process, oh, I'm, I put an extra quote here. That's why mine did that. Process finished. So now if I want to run it again for it to print you win, I can go up here, click run again. I think you can also do a, a five or something. Run. Oh, look at me an error. Oh, look what I did. Okay. There and take this off. There we go. Now I should be able to run it. Guess a number. Okay, if I want it to say you win, what do I have to put in? Five. five. Okay, so I put a five in. You win. Game over. Process finished. Okay, so this is part one. This is not finished yet. I told you, I think, in that assignment. Let me go back. I think you're supposed to go to um, page 20. Read from, uh, yeah, 61. Run the program. Test it with the values as on page 61, upload here the two files, the PY and a screenshot. Okay, so we haven't finished yet. We're gonna go through page um, 25. So we're gonna go to the next. Double equals means compare. It means not a sign. Like if you only use one equal sign, in fact, let's see what happens so you can see what happens. If you use one equal sign, 
and you say run, let's see, and it'll still run. Oh no, it's, no it didn't. Uh, it even gives you a syntax error there because it thinks that you want to assign the value five to the variable guess. So for it to be a comparison, which is what the if statement says, is it's a comparison, right? For it to compare the ver whatever value is in guess to five, then it has to have the double equals. Okay, does that make sense, Alan? Yes? Okay, thank you for asking. Because people, that's, you really need to be clear on that. And you still probably at times will forget and put that in there. And in idle, I don't think it gives you an error. I think it lets you do it, but it doesn't give you the correct answer. So, um, we'll, we'll check that out. Okay, let me go to my book on here so you can see it. Here's my preview, there it is. Okay, so this is what we just did. Now we're gonna, we ran the code already. We tested it with both values and found out both times it works. So the program works, we had input, we had processing and we had output. So those three steps are what's in every program that we write. There's gotta be input, processing the data and then generate output. So now these that are called, there are no dumb questions. These are things that you should really go through. This is how this book teaches is it says, okay, I've never heard of Python. Is it popular? It tells you where it's used. So when I'm done with this book, I'll throw Python away and use something else like C Sharp or Java. No, it just depends what you're doing. If you're in cybersecurity, you're going to use Python. Even a lot of like weather and, um, Oh, uh, engineering, they do in Excel spreadsheets use Python. C Sharp is used in a lot of game programs. So it's something that you would use. Java is a full blown programming language, but it will run on the internet. Now, C only runs on a standalone compiler. It won't, you can't put it out on the web. And so the difference is that Python runs any scripting language, whether it's Python or JavaScript, they run in what's called an interpreter, which means we just open them in the browser and it works. Well, with C Sharp and Java, you have to have a special, what's called an integrated development environment, an IDE, that will compile the program and compile compute, or I'm sorry, translated into machine code. And we don't do that in here. So these questions, um, here's what it tells you. Python came from, does anybody know what Monty Python is? Who Monty Python is? Oh, you guys do. I thought he was only in my time. So he, that's where this come from. It, it was actually a joke when it started. And then it took off and it's used everywhere now. So um, then this talks about the conversion. So what if I had not typed a number when I had asked for a guess? What if I just entered my name or something? Then the code would give you a value error because it's looking for a number. Okay. I don't get it. How am I supposed to guess the winning number? All the program tells me is that my guess is right or wrong. Come on, give me some help here. So we're going to actually add here some more to our code so that we know when we enter the number, it's going to tell us, okay, your number's too high or your number's too low. So we're going to go down here and we're going to say, you need to decide what messages should be displayed to the user. Below is a table showing some typical values the user might enter. What do you think the message should say? Okay, if number three is entered, according to the way our program's written now, the message should say too low, right? This one, it should say you win. This one should say too high. And this one should say too high, right? So those are the messages that we want to display. So 
they use that you could create a program that was simply a list of commands but you almost never will this is because a simple list of commands can only be run in one direction it's just like driving down a straight piece of road there's really only one way of doing it if you print howdy and you run down the road and print come again Input and integer are example of commands that you've already seen. So Codeville, your program is like a network of roads and there's different paths you can choose. And so if, if you start here, there are many roads that you can go to and or paths through the code. There are decision points, like when you get to here, you've got to decide if you want to go this way or this way. It's an intersection. So a path refers to the set of instructions that the computer will actually follow or execute. Now I know today I'm reading most of this, but for part two, I want you to go through and, and be able to do this on your own. Branches are code intersections. So when there's a branch, you remember we learned this in unit three that a selection statement or a decision statement are one in the same. Those are synonymous terms. Sometimes books will refer to them as select the right way to go. Some of them will say this is a decision. And on a flow chart, what, what shape did we learn to use with a decision or an if statement? What new shape are we using on a flow chart? Yes. A diamond shape. Okay, so your program makes a decision using a branch condition. You're going to say if it's true, you're going to go one direction. That's the true path. If it's false, you're going to take the false path. If else branches, there's what we have. Test for equality. Okay, so if it takes the true path, it's going to print you win. If it if you take the false path, it's going to print you lose. So here's a racetrack construction kit. So here's what we're going to do. The race start line is here and it's fixed. We're going to one, if it goes true or if it goes false, we are going to print either too low and then we're going to have to figure out if it's too high a different way. So if it goes false and we say, and we test another if statement, we say, if guess is greater than five, you remember in algebra, the little greater than and less than symbols. That's what these are. Greater than always points to the right, less than always points to the left. So if it's greater than five, yes it is, that's true, then you're gonna print the two um, high message, right? If it's not, then you're going to print the too low message. And then whenever, then you're going to go to the end. You don't give them a chance to do it again. So here's what the whole train track would look like. First, you branch saying, is guess the same as five? If it is, then you print you win and you drop out. If it's false, then there's a second branch. So we're going to have two diamond shapes. And this one is gonna say, okay, it's greater than five, true. Then you print too high and still go to the end and print game over. If it's false, then you're gonna print too low and go to game over. So we're gonna have two, that's called a nested if. So here's where we're gonna do that. Here's some examples. And remember, we've talked about this, the, you know, in this book, this watch it tells you some things that you have to be careful for. Indentation is important in Python. No other language is indentation important. <laughs> but in Python, but, but like I think it was Joe, we were talking about you were used to indenting. In la uh, most languages, people just do that because it's easier to, to figure out what your code is doing. So here's idle at a glance. Here's what we've done so far. Before you type in else, make sure you hit backspace to move the indent back one level. So we're gonna add this to our program, the nested if, 
Okay, so we're gonna go back to our pie charm. And now right here, instead of printing you lose right there, I'm gonna print another if, say if guess is greater than five, then I want to print, if it's greater than five, then I want to print to pi. Now, I still have an else inside here, so I'm gonna say, and remember I have to tab back where my else lines up, else colon, and here I can put the, I need to put the, um, else print to low. Oops. Now, you'll notice this one that says you lose, it's still going to print you lose because it's lined up with that else. So, it's, it'll print too high or too low and still print you lose and then print game over. Let's see if that, if I did it right. The best way to learn is to, to code something the way you're not sure about and try it. Okay, this one, the first one they did was with the three. Too low, you lose, game over. So it's correct. Let's try it with, let's see if I messed up the, the win one with the um, five. So this time I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna enter five. You win, game over. So that still works, didn't mess it up. So now, when I say a screenshot, just so you at least screenshot one of them, I don't care if you screenshot all three of them to uh, put, submit to the assignment, but we're not to page 25 yet. So you actually don't have to do anything yet. Okay, guess number. And this time we're gonna do a seven. Too high, you lose, game over. So our code works, right? Does anybody have trouble? Everybody's code works, right? Okay, let's see what it tells us to do next. Oh, come on, there it is. Okay, so this one works. And here it's just telling you, it's showing you what you need to do, use to, to do that. And there's the code that we just did. Okay, they took out the, they took out the you lose statement, right? They didn't put that in because if you're printing too high or too low, then you know that you lose, right? So we can take that out if we want. Okay, so that works. Why do I have to keep rerunning the program? You mean I only get one guess? The user still don't like it. So you want to be able to it, it to keep going until you put a five in, right? Because otherwise you have to keep trying it. So what are we going to use to repeat the code? We've used sequence, <laughs> selection or decision. What's the last thing that I told you we would use? and the combination of those three all semester. How can we make the program keep going? Loop. Loop, very good. Sometimes it's referred to as repetition, but it, in most coding it's referred to as loops. Loops let you run the same piece of code over and over again. Loops are a little like branches, just like branches, loops have a condition, the loop condition, that is either true or false. Also, like the if part of branches, if the loop condition is true, then a loop will run a given piece of code. For a branch, this code is called the body. For a loop, it's called the loop body. So it goes like this. When the program first reaches the loop, it checks the value of the loop condition before deciding what to do next, all right? So at the end of the loop, the program will go back to the start of the loop and check the condition again, All right? So it's gonna go over and over. It's gonna run this way and this way. All right, so 
Answer equals no, answer equals no, true, print, we are there. If the loop condition is true, the program runs the loop in the loop body and it'll say we're there. So the big difference between a loop and a branch is how many times it runs the code. So it's gonna keep running in a while loop until that it is false. So we have to have another variable. We have to say answer equals no. We have to start it out with no. While answer is the same as no, it's going to keep doing are we there. Print, we're there. So this is one that we don't have to type in. This is just showing you how it works. So here's the, here's the exercise. Now it's time to apply your programming mojo. Be warned, this exercise is kind of tricky. You need to rewrite your game program so it keeps running until the user guesses the correct answer. You will need to use all the things you've learned in this chapter. You will need to work all the, con out the, all the conditions for each of the branches and loops that are required. Okay, so we're gonna write the code. And then we're gonna add those two to the top. We're not gonna do that yet. Okay, so in order to write this code where it will loop, why didn't it show that to us? I thought it would. If you need to test that two things have different values. Okay, if you wanna know if it's not equal to, this is how you do it in Python. Instead of double equals, you would put exclamation equals. I guess it goes ahead and has us do that. Okay, remember, um, I think we've talked a little bit about functions, but even if we haven't, Python has code that's set in a library and they're called functions that are already done. They're things that, and every language has this, that are done over and over. So instead of comparing and knowing that our program is looking for five, we want, when we run our program, for it to randomly generate a number that we're trying to guess. That way we don't know what that number is, okay? So we're gonna use a function called random. Now, let me go over here and make sure, because some of that stuff in there, the way it is in the book, doesn't work exactly. So I always have to go over here. Answer on page. Okay, that's the first one that we just did. Then there's page page 25. Okay, have we gotten to page 25? Okay, so now this is the one that I want to do. Let me see if I can get it open in Python, in PyCharm for me. This is the one that you will turn in. Oh, it's not. It's going to make me open it in idle. Okay. All right, so we're going to add this to our code. We have to establish that guess starts out with zero. Then we're gonna do, this is the same as we already did. Yeah, this is the one that we just did. Okay, so that is the one that we turn in for 25. We don't go to this next step. I wasn't sure where that one is. So this is the one that you're gonna turn in for part one, what we just finished doing, okay? But now we're going to change this one, too. We're going to do something different with it. We're going to go all the way to the end of the chapter. But what we want to put in is, yeah, that does work just like it says, from random import random int. So it's saying, go to the Python library. There's a function called random, and there's methods they're called within that function called rand int. So we want it to generate a random integer. That's what rand int means. So we're going to put this and this at the top of our program. So I'm going to go back to PyCharm and I'm going to come up here before my welcome and it can be after, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to say from random import Rand int. So import, what does the word import mean? It means bring it into there. 
okay? So it's gonna bring that method in, and then I'm gonna use another variable, and I'm gonna call it secret, because I don't know what, what um, integer it's going to generate. I'm gonna say secret equals, now I'm using an assignment statement here, Alan, because I'm wanting to put what's on the right side into the variable secret, okay? I'm not doing a comparison. So I say secret equals random integer, and I have to pass it the parameters that I want to use which is I want it to generate an integer between the number, the integers one and 10. I could put one in 20. I could put one in five. I could put one in eight. Whatever I want it to generate between. So that's telling me that that method secret or that variable secret will be numbers between one and 10. So now, does anybody know what else I have to change? Is it, is it going to be comparing to um, five now? No. What's it gonna need to compare to? What secret is, right? So I'll say while guess so I've got to put a while loop in here. So I first I've got to get my input like this, like I did. Now I'm going to use a while loop. I'm going to say while guess is not equal. So not equal, remember I use exclamation mark and an equal sign. While guess is not equal to what? What variable is going to hold the generated number? the randomly generated number. What variable is going to secret? So I'm going to say while guess is not equal to secret. I'm sorry, Professor Wilson, I don't mean to interrupt you, but oh, you go ahead. See, I can't see anything you're doing on my Zoom screen. Really? They yeah. were having that problem last night in my class and I really can't do anything about it. You're gonna have to watch the video when it okay, records, fine. it records it. I don't know if it's the um, if it's the internet connection. That's what they were telling me last night. The people who were zooming in, it said it was their internet connection. So um, yeah, you won't be able to do it with me. You'll have to follow that. And then let me know if you have some questions, okay? okay. All right, so. We're saying while guess is not equal to secret, what do we want to do while it's not equal to secret? If it's not equal to secret, then we want to ask the user to enter it again, right? So we want to say this line of code it, as part of the while loop. We want to go in and say, if it's not equal, then ask for the user to guess another number, right? Um, and then we'll say, if guess is the same as secret, print you win. So we're still going to do this part, but it has to be part of my while loop. So I've got to scoot it over. but it can't say five, gotta say if it's the same as secret, right? That's every place where it said. And that means this one's gotta go over. And then we didn't need this statement. Okay, I'm not sure if this is gonna work. We're gonna try it, because there may be something else that I need to do, but we're gonna try it this way. Let's see what happens. Now, we probably wanna rename this one. Let's see if it will let me file. Oh, I should have opened a new one. 
because this one is actually part two. Um, save as, there we go. Save as part two. And see it did, it went over and opened it here, but my part one looks just like it because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't change over before. I should have changed, created a new one and copied part one into there. That's what I should have done. So now here we go. Um, so now we're gonna run Welcome, guess a number. Okay, let's just guess five. And it's it must not be equal to five because it's telling me to guess a number again, right? So something's not gonna work. Too high, guess a number. So six is still too high, so let me guess another number. Let's guess a three. Oh, three's still too high. So let's guess two, too high. I think it's not gonna work. Let's see here, let's get one. Game over, you win. So it was one. That was the number that it, but do you see what's happening? Look up here, I, I probably don't want this guess number up here again in there because I have to, if I don't, if I do that, then it's skipping my first guess. So that's why I wanna say guess is equal to zero to start out with, because there has to be something in there. And then right after it tests, it's gonna ask for a number. Guess a number. Okay, I'll say four. Too high. Ooh, it's putting low numbers in it. Three. Too high. If it's one again, it's not doing anything. Too high, it's staying one again. Okay, something's not right. Okay, so I'm gonna go right after this and I'm gonna ask it to print out what my number is. Uh, print, let me say print, because I don't think it's generating. I think I'm doing something wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna say run, run. Oh, it's a six this time. So I guess it did do, it, it just generated one two times. So it's too low. If I say six, you win game over. Okay. So I don't have to print that if I don't want. That's a debug thing. If you're not sure what's in a certain variable, it's always good to put a print statement in there and then it'll print out what, what's actually in there. So this is part two. This is what should have come up for part two. All right. Oops, there you go. So that's the part two that goes in. So that's all we were gonna do today. So you've got two of your homework assignments already done, right? So what you have to do is go to MindTap part four, unit four, which is I believe on loops. Let me see if for sure that's what it is. Let me go to Cengage right here. and sign in. Oops. So yeah, those two, did y'all get those or do you need me to pull it back up? Pull it back up, okay. Let me go back there. Okay, there you go. You don't have to have these, leave these in here. This statement here was part of part one. 
So if you take a screenshot like this, You're doing what now? Trying to save it as my turn so we can turn it in. Oh, okay. Well, it's the, it's already saved there. So what you can do, okay, go back up there. Uh, yeah, you, no, it, let's see. Okay, in PyCharm, sometimes y'all have trouble finding where you're. Yeah, go ahead and do it, but because I didn't have y'all save it the right way, so um, you'll have to submit part two to both. Uh, let's see. When you say, see, it's already there. In PyCharm, you go down here and you say show and explore, and then it'll show you where it is. It should. See right there. Mm. And so then you can submit it. Okay. And then also do it. You can submit that Python for both parts. Oh, okay. And both screenshots. What's that? And both screenshots. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You can't find it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. In, in the Windows, or you can actually do a right click on this up here, right click it, and then go down here to show and explore. And then it shows you right where it is. Okay. You want the screenshot or you want the file? Both. Okay. Just submit the same thing to both assignments.
Pompeo right in. Right then. While you're working on that, the only thing that I wanted to remind you of was the the mind tap uh, unit four. Oh, I like that. Um, so unit four. Oh, it's still on F -else's. So be sure and do, uh, and I'll be able to remind you again on Monday, but the unit four, you need to have read it because that's what I'll be going over on Monday is the unit four. And there's not a lot in there that we haven't already covered because it's still branching. We don't do looping until unit five and you've already been introduced to loops now. And that's what I like to do is to kind of give you an overview where you can do all of them. But even test two that you code will be um, the Wednesday before spring break. That will be your next test two, and it will it will still not have looping. It will have just if the if else's okay. So even though we've kind of got an introduction today to loops, uh, chapter four is going to be just over branching and and a lot more nesting of if else's. So it goes when you go through chapter four, you'll see we've only done one nested if and an else side. So it'll get a little bit more. Uh, complicated. It'll just show you different ways to test more than one time. So that's what we'll be covering on Monday. Do anybody have any questions? All right. Put up here. Recording.